from 1965's Mr. Tambourine Man album, we just heard The Birds right here on the Vintage Rockin' Pop Shop, a song, of course, written by their main songwriter in the early days, Gene Clark. The late Gene Clark is the subject of a new documentary film called The Bird Who Flew Alone, The Triumph and Tragedy of Gene Clark. The producer of that documentary is with me today. It's Paul Kendall. And I'm curious, Paul, where this love for uh, Gene Clark's music came from. Did you start off being a fan of the birds? Um, I'm I'm not quite old enough to remember the birds in their first flush of glory. Um, I mean, I heard Mr. Tambourine Man on the radio, but I was I was only like sort of ten years old at the time. Right. Um, So I wasn't really that aware of them. Um, I, I became much more aware of Gene rather than the birds. Um, a little bit later on, around Billard and Clark, um, sort of a few years later, when I'd started to take a, a sort of more serious interest in music and, and was particularly drawn from an early age to the sort of roots, Americana, country, blues side of things. For some reason, I've no idea why. It just sort of really struck a chord in me. Right. Um, and then in 77, when he was over here on, on a tour with, uh, with Roger McGuinn and his band and Chris Hillman and his band, I actually met Gene. I was doing a stint as a music writer at the time, uh, and I interviewed him for a magazine called Zigzag. And he made quite an impression on me as, as a man, as well as a, as a musician, you know, songwriter, artist. So it, it, uh, he, he's someone who'd always had held a kind of special place in my heart. And then in, in for Christmas 2010, I was given the, uh, the excellent biography that John Ineson wrote, Mr. Tambourine Man, which filled in quite a few of the gaps in the story of, of Gene Clark that I, that I hadn't previously been aware of. Right. And I, and I thought, well, as well as, a, as, well as fantastic music, this, this was a fantastic, if, if very sad, story. And, when, and I was surprised when I found out that nobody had ever, you know, bothered to make a documentary, a, a, a film about him, and that's where it really started from. Um, just that feeling that since nobody else had got round to doing it in the 20-odd years since his death, um, yeah, maybe I should. Well, we're certainly glad you did. You know, it's interesting that over time, Gene Clark's contributions to folk music and folk rock and country and Americana have largely been ignored. I mean, Bob Dylan is put on a pedestal, and, and you know, rightly so. And so is Graham Parsons, who was briefly in The Birds. But Gene Clark, the main guy, has been pushed to the side. Well, yeah. I mean, for a long time, not, not far off it. I mean, certainly most of the people that, that, that I know, even people who are into music, as we were doing the project, I'd tell them what I was doing. They'd be like, Gene who? You know, who is, who is this guy? Um, and the, Graham Parsons, I mean, I, I also love Graham Parsons, but to, to my mind, Gene should be at least, at least as well recognized and, and as, as applauded, if you like, as, as, as Graham. I um, mean, yeah, and Graham tends to get the, the, the credit for being like the sort of father of country rock and, and, and the innovator in that area. But, I mean, really, if you look at it, history shows that, that Gene was there ahead of him, um, not just with Dillard and Clark, but, but with his first solo album, yeah. which was really sort of one of the, as, as Sid Griffin says in the film, um, was, was one of the, probably the real first, you know, serious exploration into, in, into melding the, the country thing with, with a more rock influence. We just heard two cuts from Gene Clark's debut solo album from 1967, Gene Clark with the Gosden Brothers, Tried So Hard, and then uh, my personal favorite on the album, Elevator Operator. I know it's something of a Beatles pastiche, but uh, I just love the sound of it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, of course, you know, I mean, in, in, in those early days, in the birds and into, into his early solo career, the Beatles were, um, as, as they were on so many people, were, were right. a massive influence. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I doubt very much that the Birds, or, as well as many other bands, would have happened if it hadn't been for the Beatles. That's true. We're talking to the producer of the new documentary film, The Bird Who Flew Alone, The Triumphs and Tragedy of Gene Clark. Paul Kendall is our guest. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, there's so much footage of Gene during his time with the Birds, but after the Birds, not so much. Not so much is putting it mildly. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's between leaving the birds in early '66 and 
uh, McGuinn Clark Hillman, which I think started in late seventy seven, maybe seventy eight. Right. For that, for that ten years or more, there is literally no Gene Clark footage. Absolutely nothing. Um, and we looked high and low, and I know other people who are you know much more expert and have been looking for a lot longer than I have. There is literally nothing. I mean, one of the big problems with with, with Gene's career once he left the bird was that for whatever reason he he just wasn't prepared to go out of his way to promote it. He wasn't interested in doing TV, wasn't interested in doing interviews, wasn't interested particularly in, in going further than down the road to, to, to play a show. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's what kind of stopped his career from, from taking off in the way that the, the quality of the work deserved. He, he just wouldn't go out there and, and get behind it. Well, you take that reluctance to see his solo career move to the next level with his drug problems and, and boozing problems, and I think it's fair to say that Gene was his own worst enemy. Sure, yes, ab- yeah. absolutely. I mean, he, he as, a, as, a, as a film you know, again says, he had a particular portal for sabotaging the big moments that did come along, you know, the big prestige, like the opening night at the Troubadour with Dillard and Clark, um, and he went back there again um, later in the in the seventies with with another one of his bands, and again just sort of basically completely sabotaged the gig. Um, you know, turned what should have been a a showcase you know event into into a fiasco. Yeah, I mean, you know, you hate to play armchair psychiatrist, but you you think to yourself, was he just afraid of success? And you know, and the and the pressures that came with success was. It's, uh... Yeah, there definitely was an element of that. I mean, I, I, I mentioned earlier on that, that I, I, I met him once in, back in 77 um, and spent several hours with him, just sort of one-on-one doing the interview, and then the, the, the gig that they were supposed to be doing that night had got cancelled, so we just carried on talking once I, I, I turned the, the, the tape recorder off. And I, he really struck me as a, as a, as a very unstar-like star, um, a very self-effacing um you know, not at all self-confident man, quite vulnerable. Once he was on stage, he was a, a, a strong, kind of, you know, charismatic figure and, and other people who, who saw him play live far more often than I, unfortunately, did, um, testified to that. that he, he, he had a great stage presence and, and was a great performer. You know, I played one of my favorite Gene Clark solo songs, and I started off this interview playing the Bird song, I'll Feel a Whole Lot Better, which is one of my favorite uh, Gene Clark written songs. I want to ask you to pick a favorite Bird song and Gene Clark solo song to play. Okay. Um, the favorite Bird's one uh, would, would have to be, I think, um, She Don't Care About Time. Mm-hmm. Um, not, not the best known song that Gene wrote for the Birds. Obviously, Eight Miles High was, was, was the biggest hit that he wrote, and, and, and Feel a Whole Lot Better is the one that's been covered by Tom Petty and, right. and numerous right. other people. But I think that She Don't Care About Time is a, is a particularly sensitive and, and, and melodically beautiful uh, piece of work. All right, that was Paul Kendall's Birds pick. Now how about a uh, Gene Clark solo pick? Ooh, solo stuff, such a wealth of choice. Um, I would definitely have to say for a Spanish guitar from the White Light album, that's probably my favorite Gene Clark song of, of, of the whole lot. This documentary, The Bird Who Flew Alone, features some incredible pieces of music from uh, Gene Clark, as well as great interviews with Gene's family and friends and also the surviving birds, and I was particularly struck by David Crosby's comments and how how highly he he thought of uh, Gene Clark. Yeah, I I, I think to a certain extent with with both him and and, and with Roger, um, there's a slight element of of, of guilt going on there. I I think it's fairly well established that back in the day when the the birds were at the height of their fame and success, they probably weren't as nice to Gene as they could have been. But then they were all young men at the time, you know, under, you know, going through extraordinary experiences. Right. Um, right. No doubt extraordinary stresses and strains. So, so you have to forgive them. And of course, you know, as, as, as we all know, as you get older, you kind of tend to mellow and, uh, and, and, and see things in a more, uh, in a more generous light. Everybody 
really. I mean, gave us gave us terrific interviews. David Crosby, yeah, as you say, David Crosby was a was was a star. Um, Chris Hillman, I thought, gave us a wonderful interview, full of insight and, and affection and uh, um, you know honesty. You know, it's interesting that even after Gene Clark left the Birds, he kept coming back. You know, if uh, somebody dropped out, he would pitch in on a TV appearance. And they continued to uh, record some of his songs over the years. In fact, on that 1973 reunion album, Gene has the strongest songs out of any of them. Oh, absolutely. Well, as Chris Hillman says in, in the film, you know, he, he's very frank that the others, the others all had other projects going on and, and probably weren't offering up their best material. Um, Gene was certainly the one, I think, who, who came to it with the greatest enthusiasm and, as you say, brought his A-game both as a writer uh, and as a singer. Well, it's a very, very moving documentary, and uh, I certainly recommend it. It's called The Bird Who Flew Alone, The Triumphs and Tragedy of Gene Clark. And, Paul, where can people go to uh, to get this documentary and see it? <laughs> well, we're, we're selling it, pri- primarily we're selling it ourselves through our website, which is foursuns, F-O-U-R-S-U-N-S, productions.com. Um, we're selling it worldwide. It's a, it's a multi-region DVD, so it'll play on any DVD player anywhere in the world. Um, there are a few places, um, sort of independent record stores and online places in, di- in different countries that are also stocking it. Um, but, but, but we're the main one at the moment. I was just going to say, for the audience, I'll, I'll say it in case they uh, didn't quite get it over the phone, foursonsproductions.com, and that's sons as in the sun in the sky four sun sons sky, productions yeah, and, yeah. and four as in the number yeah right and one last thing what's the next project <laughs> <laughs> that's the big question that everybody asks and the, the answer the answer that right is is, is is right now we don't know we've got two or three ideas that we're working on um but but nothing that's uh, sort of sufficiently developed to uh to start talking about just yet well you'll have to keep us up to date on that we'll do we'll do all right thanks so much paul okay